Before today's episode, I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations, and recognise their continued connection to the beautiful land and sea. I'd also like to pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging, and I extend this acknowledgement to the traditional owners of the land my listeners are on. Welcome to Ritual the Podcast, your cottage in the woods, a sacred space for the witches, the healers, the magical folk to meet and speak of wisdom, witchery and old world magic, where people come to learn, to hear stories, to share secrets and to be free to be their true selves. Welcome to Ritual. Hello and welcome back to Ritual. I have a guest today and his voice may sound very familiar and that's because you've heard it before. I am here today with Mr. Patrick Harvey, aka my husband. Aka awesome to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Now um, we are here for a very special reason or should I say a very spooky reason Mm -hmm. and that is that we are getting into the Samhain season mood yes it is Samhain is only about two and a half weeks away now two three weeks away so Samhain season has officially begun Uh, now if you're wondering what is Samhain it is the next turn of the wheel in the witch's wheel of the year and it is almost like the Halloween uh turn so one of the reasons why witches get so excited about this is because the veil between the two worlds between our world and the next is going to be at its thinnest so this basically means that communication with uh you know spirits ancestors guides all all the things that are found in the next world is at its peak and you will start to notice a few more little bumps in the night Mm. Uh, now you may be hearing a few bumps and creaks on our end and that's because we have about 47 animals in this room who are all making noise so you also have two gremlins that live upstairs yeah you can probably hear a guitar (laughs) just think of it as like ambience like ooh, maybe they have a ghost in their house maybe the kids are asleep and we probably do we probably do um they play with the children most likely guitar mostly um but what we wanted to do today we're not going to dive too much into what sawan is just yet that will be the next episode that we do together titled sawan mm-hmm but today we wanted to do a fun episode where we one of the activities that people do around Samhain time is they tell spooky stories. And fun fact about Patty and I is we love scary things. We love them. Mm-hmm. We also oh. have a very high mm. pain threshold for scary things. So it, it takes it takes a bit now to get us to get us scared. Yeah. But we do embrace it and we do welcome it. We do. And funny, funny story. So Amy and I went out on a date. The first date. The first date. Maybe 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the next day, we went out on another date. And we went to the cinema and we watched Paranormal Activity. Mm -hmm. And we'd only known each other, what, seven days at this point in total? Because we met the week before we went out on a date. No, two weeks. We'd known each other for two weeks. No. Because we met on the weekend. You called me on the Tuesday. We went out that Saturday. Oh, I don't know. Was this so was long the Sunday. <laughs> I may say that men forget the details. Um, I am actually <laughs> the worst one when it comes to the details. I when, when, forever... did we, when did we, when did we first go out? What do you mean? When did we first go out? What date? The fifth of December. What, what year? Oh, I don't know. Oh, cheapers. Anywho, what year is it? Uh-huh. Um, so we went to a paranormal activity, and that kind of was funny because that kind of set off this um, pattern with us where we would like, we go, oh, I, lo- I love films like that. And then we just watch films like that all the time, yeah. watch shows. And there's some like people would recommend, and they go, Oh, you got to see this film. It is terrifying. And we'll, we'll get excited, watch it, and go, nah, It's actually not that I'm bored. great. And I don't know what it is. I mean, obviously, and we'll talk about this in a wee bit anyway, but. 
you know, we had our own experiences with stuff happening. We've um, had many mm, spooky things happen to us, many, I'd say. Many. Um, even as a kid, I had things happening to me. Like, I know when I was little, da- my dad woke up in the night and he saw a, like a, a ghost of a woman, like a old fashioned woman and her child looking into my room and they walked into my room and so he just went back to bed. <laughs> But that sounds exactly like something he'd do. He would do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I yeah, I think especially me, things have always seemed mm. to follow me around, yeah. and we've had we've had so many stories. Me we? too. But I've had that as well. Like, mm. um, I think it's the more open you are to it, and because we'd had so many, we were so open to it. So we're probably just like, yep. Yeah, I'm, I think house. it stepped up a massive notch whenever we got together. Yeah. Like all that stuff that happened in the first place we were in, even with the whistling. Yeah. The the one that was the, we once lived in this house in Chelsea in Melbourne. Mm. And that was probably the house that had the most, like the most active. consistent activity. And it seemed to get worse and worse and worse. I think because obviously we were more aware of it, mm. but like we would have things like, like you'd be in the shower and you know you just know when someone is watching you i constantly had that feeling mm. but then there was one night where and this is my bad i woke up in the night and i heard two people having a conversation literally in our bathroom like just beyond our bathroom because the bathroom led into the hallway it was kind of like a half half ensuite semi mm. ensuite so it led into the hallway and I could hear two people like clear as day, like mm. kind of going, blah, 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 blah. and so I have woken up, I'm like, Patty, Patty, there's, there's people talking out in our bathroom. And he, he's just sat up. He's like, What? I'm like, there are people talking near our bathroom. And he goes, Where? Where? And it's like all quiet for a minute. And then he looks over and he goes, I can't hear anything. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was gone, gone I back was... to sleep. And I left there going, Amy, <laughs> Amy. And I just sat there for about half an hour just trying to get back to sleep. Going, please go back to sleep. But that bathroom was, mm. there was one night. And it's funny because we had friends stay over when we were away. And the boyfriend was a, uh, a, a, was, was a skeptic. And yes. he was, could not wait to get out of the house the next day. He said he heard giggling. So yeah. something grabbed his foot. Mm-hmm. And... um. And that was like, for us, that was like confirmation that we weren't absolutely Ugh. bonkers. But um, there were, I, I woke up that was... night and remember that I saw the man washing his hands at the bathroom sink. Yes. And I saw the figure of a man at our bathroom sink. And I just kind of looked at him and went, oh. And I, I swore it could have been my granddad. Like, it, it was the same size. It seemed to be man. a hub. I think the but scariest remember, thing for me. The fridge? Oh, yeah. The fridge would always, like, it would always open. And so I would go out. And the fridge would be open and I would go, oh, I must have left it open Mm. and I'd close it. I'd walk off. And then when our our fridge at the time, when you left it, it would go beep, beep, beep. And so I close the fridge, walk off, and then literally 30 seconds later, you hear beep, beep, beep. Mm. And you go out and the fridge is wide open again. And this would happen all All the the time. time. That happened because it was was, was was on like a minute timer or something like that. And I remember the morning you, I was in the bathroom and you went, I'm away. And I said, bye-bye. And then I'd say a good three and a half minutes later, four minutes later, I heard beep, beep. And I was like, what is that? And the way the fridge, a big stainless steel door, a lot of like a weight on it. And, you know, we even that night, whenever you come into the bathroom and you went, oh, my God, look at the fridge. And I went, what? And you went, it's open. Uh. And I went, yeah. He said, I just closed it. And we both went, no. And we tested it. Remember? Because yeah. we were watching a lot of Ghost Hunters as well, and it was, uh, we, we've always done, but mm. we were trying to like debunk it. So we opened the door and ha- kind of held it a wee bit open. It would close open halfway, and it would close. And in order to make it, like in order even to pass the door, you'd have to, like, you'd be against the bench. So you'd have to, like, close it. Mm-hmm. Um, There was no way. There was no way you would have missed it. I think the um, scariest thing for me in that house was we had a dog, Rosie, at the time, and she's this big foxhound cross dog. And she, I think I heard, I must have heard something in the laundry. 
And as I was opening the door, I could see her in there staring right at the corner. Like her tail was pointed up. She was frozen, just staring. And as I opened the door, I heard this voice go, hey. And that, it was like this shiver just ran down my whole body. And I was like, fuck this. And I I closed the door and I was like, there is something really weird going on in this house. It felt yuck. It felt, it it just didn't feel good. And I'm not sad to be out of that house at all. No, there was, remember the one with buttons? And so the spur room was always very a strange room to be around and that was in that hallway near where the bathroom was Mm. and it was always a very cold room and I walked in there one day and Buttons our cat was just like because the cat would always be act really and so would the dog they'd act so weird some nights they'd just stir at things they'd follow them follow them yeah it was just weird and I remember people saying to us why why are you in that house um and we were just like I kind of just get you kind of just get used to it, mm. but always felt like you were being watched 100%. But it wasn't very nice. Went into the spur room that, that day, and I saw Buttons, and she was like, just eyes wide open, just staring at something, and sort of looking up and down. And I looked to where she was looking, and I went, hiya. And then I just got the biggest rush of cold down my body. And I was like, no, I'm getting out of here. And I just ran out. Mm. It was... We tried um, to figure out what the story was with that house as well. And I tried apparently to do. there was a fire um, and a man got caught in it. But I think it was like maybe the house that was there previously. Because it was, we were in three units. We, um, or we were in there was more than one. So. so but, but, no, hold on. No, no, there was the other one. There was the other one. There was the other time um, <laughs> as well. Please help me. Listen. What other time? So. Um, the, the pantry would open as well. But, um, oh yeah, so I didn't think, I always thought there was a meal. I always thought there was a meal there. Mm. And um, uh, whenever we had our friends stay over, um, our mate said, he goes, it was a girl, it was a girl. I could hear her giggling. And I was mm-hmm. like, nah, it's a, I could, you could just feel it was a meal. And, and one night, and you know how they say when you're ha- when you get into that half sleep point, liminal space. Then you're more you're more aware. And I heard, without a doubt, there was a female giggle right in my left ear, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I went, oh, I'm just absolutely shit myself. And mm-hmm. I and I just just grabbed Maduna and tucked it in so tight and turned away from it because I thought if I look away, <laughs> it's not there. Mm-hmm. It. There was a lot of there was a lot of nights like that. Yeah, and I think <sighs> also going into Sawan, you'll start to notice that you do start to see, you know, things in the corner of your eyes. You start to hear things more often. Maybe you you get more um, messages come through to you. But I know, mm. like in our previous house around Sawan we would always where the front door was next to it was this big window and you would always see shadows pacing back and forth pace, pacing back and forth over and over and over and then after so when they would just start to hmm. leave and that's why i think having protection in your house is so important hmm. because they were there but they could not come in the house because it was we made it very clear there was never anything in not that house it was welcome. definitely outside though because hmm. i remember the amount of times cotton stuff and i would just see black shadows and you go, there's someone there. I swear mm-hmm. there's someone there. And it was almost like when the postman comes to the door. Or post person, yeah. I should say. You're waiting for um, the doorbell to ring. Y- yes. And that was always, there was always that expectation. Mm. And it would happen. And you had that weird experience out the watcher, man. Yeah. I don't know if that was coming up to Sal and no. That's no, just, that was just on a Tuesday. Yeah, I <laughs> some, sometimes I see weird things. This is more of a me story, but I, especially at night time, this is it seems to happen. And I need to kind of figure out more about this. But basically, what happens is when I'm driving at night time, I think maybe the energy is more. I don't know. I don't know. I need to figure it out. But basically, when I'm driving at night time especially around where we were, I would see these figures on the side of the road and they were kind of human-like, but also not. But really the energy was yuck. Like 
as soon as I would see them, it was almost like that Dementor feeling. Like you feel like something is being like taken from you. Mm. And there was one that was like, like the, and there was kind of like, um, contorted just sitting at the side of the road watching me drive past Ugh. with these like black eyes and then as I was turning the corner it was like someone had walked straight up to my window and like into the in the middle of the road and I got the biggest fright because I thought there was someone there but then they were gone and I just oh I felt so yuck and I called Patty and I'm like you need to come and get me out of the car because I was so freaked out about it and I think it really depends on where I am like some around where we live now I've never experienced it but some suburbs in particular I think that the energy is really yuck they must feed off something around Mm. there maybe I don't know but that's just more of a me story. That's eerie, though. Like It's pretty gross. And I remember because I would often see just like a, a, bar, a bar of black. It would be like it was just that was like a black figure, a black bar almost mm. in your side and your peripheral. When you mm-hmm. look up and it would just it, would, it was gone. And then after Amy told me about that night and there was a couple of those nights. Yeah. I every time I'd feel that sort of person near the front door, I'd go, "Oh, I hope it's not one of the contorted people." Yeah. Well, they that. they never came into our house or near us. No. I think because our frequency was much higher. I think they were must have been very low because they felt horrible. Um, mm. Yeah, I need to figure out what that is. If anyone knows or if they've like felt that before or seen that before, can you please tell me? Because it is very weird. Mm. Um, now, we have gathered our own spooky stories to share yes. with each other. Now, some of these I actually got from you guys. I posted on Instagram and you guys have sent through some. There were quite a lot, so I've just picked a handful Um, but we've also got our own to share with each other. Um, and we want to try and spook each other, don't we? We want to try and get a little bit scared. (laughs) A little bit freaky. A little bit of anxiety. Just a, just a a hum. Is yours a long story? Mine's Uh, very short and I think you might've heard it before. (laughs) Mine, well, it depends on how fast I read it. I'm telling mine, and I think it'll talk take me 47 seconds. But anyway. Mm. Now, telling spooky stories, I have always loved doing this. And I remember there was one as a kid, and I wanted to tell you. I don't know if you've heard this one, but this is one that, oh, oh it even now, it gives me shivers. Because... Hold on, before you do, let's just cue the thunderbolt. So this story, you've probably heard it before, but I'm going to tell it. And this is one of those ones that, you know, it's one of those like urban legend kind of stories that as a kid, it's like makes you want to wet your pants. But as an adult, makes you you still want to wet your pants. (laughs) So this was a story about a man who went to stay in a hotel. And as he was checking in, he got his key and the lady at the desk said, now when you go into your room, your room's next to another room, um, but it's got no number on it and it's locked. So just keep it locked. Like, don't worry about it. You're, but your room is next to that one. Um, and so he went and went into his room. He saw the door as he walked past, went into his room. He was getting ready for bed. Now that night he could hear a lady crying and it sounded like it was coming out from the hallway. And so he's like, looked out, he couldn't see anything. He went out of his room and it was coming from that room. Mm -hmm. And so he has gone over, he's knocked on the door and he's like, are you okay? Nothing. But he could still hear this woman crying. And so again, he's knocked on the door. Are you okay? Didn't hear anything. He looked through the the little, um, what's it called, like a keyhole to see if he could see, because she sounded like she was quite distressed, looked in and all he could see was red. There was nothing there. And he's like, oh, maybe she's blocked the door. Maybe there's something there. I can't see anything. I'm just going to leave it. And he went back to bed. Next day, went out, did whatever he was doing, came back and he went into the night. He went into bed and again he could hear this lady crying 
and he was like there's something going on with this woman like she is in trouble I really need to like see if she's okay so again he got up knocked on the door he's like excuse me are you okay is everything okay nothing look through the keyhole all red can't see anything and he's like me I'm gonna go and talk to the front desk so he goes downstairs and he goes excuse me um, I know you told me about this room, but I think there's somebody in there and I think that she's in trouble. And she goes, oh, can you hear her? And he's like, yes. And she goes, oh, um, yeah. So apparently there's a ghost in that room. Um, a few years ago, a man actually murdered his wife. Um, and sometimes people say that they can hear her and that she's crying and it's just really creepy because she's, you know, um, she's like very pale. Um, and the spooky thing about her is that she's got red eyes. (gasps) (laughs) Uh, Doesn't that make you feel so uncomfortable? Oh, (laughs) yuck. Oh, imagine. I know. Well, that was a good one. I know. Did you just remember that? Or is that the one you're meant to be reading? No, I remembered that. Oh. How could you not? Like, it was it was burnt into my brain. It terrified me. That's a really good one. Mm. Apparently she's got red eyes. Mm-hmm. So he had been staring at her eyes that whole friggin' time. Uh, that's, oh, that's something like in, you know, like Insidious or something like yeah, that. No. Where you'd look through and it'd be red and then you'd go around the other side of the door and then you'd see like... Oh, don't. <sighs> that makes me feel so uncomfortable. Oh my gosh. My gosh. Anyway. I don't know where you guys came from. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, so delicious. <laughs> Did you want to read your story first? I'm not going to read one. I'm going to tell you one okay. from... Do you want to go next? Whenever I was a child. Oh, yes. Go. It was a dark and stormy night. It wasn't, but it was daytime. But my, my ma, my mother, my mummy, um, was a nurse for many, many years, and she worked in aged care. And one day she came home <clears throat> from work, and she said, I "Had the most bizarre day." And we said, "What happened?" And she said. So we have this couple in their late 80s and they've been married for over 60 years and they, one of them got sick and it's one of those things that, you know, when two people are sort of stuck like that, the, the, the husband then got sick. So the wife got sick, then the husband got sick and the family arranged that they would both be in the same room with each other. And... So they had this private room to themselves in this in this home, separate beds. And so they'd have a, a like a bedside table, a bed, another bedside table and a bed and then a window. And so they were there for months and the the husband um, passed away. And maybe about two weeks later, um, they were all on break. They were in the tea room. And the the buzzer went off for their room. And so room, whatever it was, 213, the buzzer went off. And they went into the room and the buzzer was still going. You could hear it. It was in the 90s. So it wasn't the way it is now. So the, the buzzer was in the room. Meep, 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 meep. And the, the wife had fallen out of bed. So three staff come in. They go, oh, no, no, are you okay? Are you okay? And they help her up. They help her up slowly and lift her onto her bed and get her all snug in bed. And they go, are you okay? She goes, yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right. And my ma turned around to get her buzzer to turn it off, her panic button. And she looked at it and she turned it off, but the buzzer was still going. And she looked at it again. She goes, what, what, what's, what's going on here? And then one of the other nurses went, uh, Mary. And she was holding up the husband's buzzer that was on the other side of the room. <sighs> and the light was on it. That's so lovely. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, Isn't that just the most? It's so like it's story. no, but that's it is nice spooky because one. I would absolutely shit myself. But it's beautiful as well, and and there's a, there's, there's something about you know, obviously hospitals. There's there's a lot of emotion yeah, but, and mm. and whatnot. And my my ma worked at the Royal Victoria Hospital in Belfast 
when I was a kid and it was the RVH it's called and it was a big big old building um like very like solid building you know um like stone polished um like granite all over the place um and there's another one I want to tell you about Belfast as well it was very very quick but um whenever she did night shift in there they would be in the staff room and they would hear kids giggling and laughing Ooh, and because of the stone scary a hundred percent because of the stone and the and the high um paint like gloss paint as well gloss painted walls they would just echo this echo this giggle through the hallway and she would come home and tell us this stuff and i was i was, I was terrified every time she'd come home with a story i'm like <sighs> stop um but um she she came home and she said we heard the kids last night giggling in the hall and they would send you know the nurses would be like go and find out what's going on and they'd go up and they'd search and they'd search and they never found a kid but that that ward that they're in used to be a a kid's cancer ward oh no uh... and i i again what it's it's kind of heartbreaking but you just like it's spooky as well because <sighs> They hear, like, I mean, you know, I hear our kids giggle sometimes and I get a wee bit scared because, you know, kids giggle. <laughs> I'm scared more because I'm like, <laughs> what have they done? In bed. <laughs> um, and, and there was another one. So in, in so during the Second World War, um, the, the Nazis bombed Belfast. So Belfast got really badly bombed, called the Belfast Blitz. And there is a big swimming pool um, on the Falls Road called the Falls Baths. And um, during that time, uh, there were bodies everywhere and they drained the pool and they had to put bodies in there and they used Jesus. it as a makeshift morgue after the, the bombings mm. and there are many many reports of people swimming there late at night and there are people walking around the edge oh. of the pool but there's no there's no one there they, there's a guy in particular I think it was a doctor and he would go there late at night after his shift and he was one of the last people always You're in the pool. You're asking for something to happen. Yeah. You're asking. If you go to a pool late at night, you're like, excuse yeah, me, you're gonna you get please dragged haunt under. Because we had that as well. I was like, okay, I'm not remembering them all. Can You're I just... taking all the no, time. But can I, just... I know, but... I'm sorry. That... Is this ritual with Patty Harvey or is this ritual with Amy? <laughs> this week's episode is with me. <laughs> and so I never get to talk. Please <laughs> help me. Um, I might start my own um, podcast called Rituals. <laughs> with <laughs> Patty Spooky Stories. Patty Spooky Stories dot com. Um and so there's another one. So I was doing a play in the West End in London whenever I lived in London. And the theatre was in Leicester Square and it was downstairs below a French Roman Catholic church or a French Catholic church. Mm-hmm. And where the theatre is was used as a crypt for the church. Uh. and there was some odd shit used to happen in there and even the the owner his mother died in the theater theaters are and renowned for having a ghost though i saw i saw like but so they're many. almost welcomed like I, it's a very like theater folk are very superstitious but yeah. i feel like every single theater has a, As a ghost. ghost and they are very well and they know who they them. are they know their name there and and they say that you are meant to leave a candle out for the ghost that lives in that theater because if you don't it's almost like an insult and they'll play up and they'll make things go wrong but if you leave a candle out for that ghost they will kind of go yeah right i'll let you do your show and whatever you know yeah you acknowledge them you have and- to so Graham, I mean the theater as well. Like you have to give them some yeah. kind of attention. Well, yeah. Well, that, that I think one of the guys was in, in whenever I did Panto in in Chatham. Um, my mate Graham was doing lighting design one night, and he was up up way up high in the booth, and he he had a, a window that he could see down to the stage at. So when you're on stage, you could look up, see a tiny window, and see a silhouette of him. And he said he was sitting there doing lights late one night because he'd do the pre-program. He'd, I'll, I'll perfect that later on after everyone's gone. And he saw a figure sitting in one of the seats down mm. in the auditorium. And he's like, hello, hello. Guy didn't move. Hello, didn't move. So he walks out 
down the stairs and then into the auditorium. Figures there. He kept walking around the chairs and he's gone down a step and then up a step, goes to the chair, no, no one there. And, and I was in that theater late one night with him years later and I'd walked from the auditorium round to the hallway and the doors, the swing doors were whoop, 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 whoop. Mm. That theater was active. But in that, in where that, was that? In that London. was in Chatham, in Kent. Um. But in in that theater in 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 Leicester Square, I was telling you about, where the guy's mummy died, there was always stuff. And he goes, "I see my mum in here all the time. She sits up near the sound booth." That's kind of sweet. That's nice for him. It's not nice for me. I didn't know his mummy, <laughs> and I, I'd be I'd be shitting myself every night that I saw a silhouette of someone. I was like, "Is that an audience member? Or his mummy." <laughs> Uh, I love that. I, I'm gonna bow out for a wee minute and let Amy talk. No, thanks. <laughs> but they all came flooding back to me. Can you tell he's also a Leo and an actor? Rawr. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna read my first story that I found because then I have everyone else's. There's stories. not enough time to read two, so we only did one. Oh my gosh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> All right, this is just a story I found online, and it is actually set in Melbourne, where we are right now, which is a little bit spooky. Um, so I'm just going to read it out. Here um, we go. Okay, so Amy's story, set in Melbourne, in Australia. The year... Oh my God, Okay, sorry, talking. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Next time I'm getting a different co-host. Anyway, a few years ago... I moved into a one-bedroom apartment in Melbourne. It was my first time living on my own. The apartment block had been built in the 1930s. I'd been there for a few months when I came home from work one day and went into the bathroom. I saw something strange, a wooden board which had covered a hole in the ceiling that led to a small attic space, immediately terrifying, lay fractured in two pieces on the ground. I examined the pieces. The board was an inch thick and would have taken a Bruce Lee to kick it, to break it, sorry. I thought the landlord, I thought the landlord had sent someone to work on the attic. I was frozen stiff with fear. Someone is up there for sure, I thought. I emailed pictures to the landlord asking if anyone had been in there with an undertone of annoyance since she hadn't warned me. Her reply read, Please call me as soon as you are able to. Not the response you want. Just side note. No. I called and she explained that her last two tenants had said the same thing happened. She promised to replace the board and she did. A month later, I woke up one night around 4am. My body was covered in goosebumps. It felt like someone was rubbing his or her hands on me. Everything was silent, but then I heard a dragging sound coming from above the bed. What? It was as if someone was pulling a sack of potatoes. I froze, convinced someone was up there. There is no way an animal could make that sound. After five minutes, I worked up the courage to turn on the light, armed myself with a cricket bat, and walked to the bathroom. That's when I saw that the new board covering the hole was broken in two. <sighs> I felt sick. The dragging sound had stopped, but I heard something else. Whispering. Oh, fuck. The sound was clear and coming from the attic. It sounded like children's voices, and I heard one sentence repeated over and over. It's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> oh, shit. I switched on every light in the apartment to make things feel normal. It was 5 a.m. and dark outside. I watched TV to try and unwind, then a fuse blew. My pet budgie, Dexter, whom I kept in the kitchen, usually never made a sound at night, but then he started squawking like he was being strangled. I'd never heard him make those noises. He was screaming. I grabbed my car keys, ran out, sat in my car, and waited until the sun came up. When I saw people walking their dogs, this comforted me enough to go back in. The front door was open, but I figured I might have forgotten to close it when I ran out. I went to the kitchen to check on Dexter, but he wasn't in his cage. I felt sick again. All the windows were closed, so I looked everywhere in the house. When I walked to the bathroom, I heard splashing. 
Dexter was half drowned in the toilet. I took him out, washed him and dried him. I was so confused. At 8 a.m. I called the landlord and gave her a watered down version of the night. Oh, wow. You heard the whispering too, she said. I stayed in that apartment for another 18 months. I heard the whispering on a few occasions and twice the board covering the hole in the ceiling moved. Although I live somewhere else now, the landlord recently called. She said that the new tenants had begged to speak with me about some of the stuff that's been going on there. Forget it. It's their problem now. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that spooky? That is your turn now. Oh, anything? Kids. Whisper. Squawking the, bird. The whispering, like, oh. like, and, and it's the same with it. I mean, we've all, I mean, I, I'd say we've all, like, you and I, you and I have heard that at nighttime, that. Yeah. And it's never a distinct it's, voice. It's I think just it's this, that, like, dragging noise, because that obviously was the the thing in the roof being dragged over, right? Maybe. Oh. Or delicious potatoes. Maybe they were cooking, and it's your turn now. It's your turn to cook them. They were making spuds. <laughs> um, that is yeah. madness. The, it's, the, it's, it's so funny. I, I don't know what it is, but why is it that the, the stories that involve, and then a little girl. I don't know. Giggled. Why that you go, oh, kids? that's terrifying. I don't know. Maybe The Shining had something to do with that. It just really like created that idea that dead kids are terrifying or oh, maybe it's that sort of yeah, the innocence of it but they're oh, so I feel scary bit, like freaked out now <laughs> i feel a little bit tickly. did you hear there was bumps coming from upstairs with the kids as well i was like hmm. um that'll be fun yeah so my sister had that similar thing in their house when a board moved in in morty alec were they making potatoes they love potatoes, but no. <laughs> no, no, no. But the, the board moved um, and they had no explanation for it. There'd always be a draft and they'd look up and the manhole cover was always moved and nobody had moved it and they were tall ceilings <sighs> and they were petrified of being there. Mm. Like my brother-in-law is six and a half foot. He's a giant. And Doesn't he was like, matter. I do not like this place. I do not like living here. Um, and it's funny. There's so many people who, who experience stuff like that and then they just kind of poo-poo it and go, ah, nah, it's whatever. But, you know, sometimes it gets thrown in your face so much so that you can't really deny that there's something going on. Do you know what I mean? I think it's and just that's what because happened with, with, with Chelsea. It's just so, so unexplained. Like, there's no confirmation from the authorities that these things are real. So you're always going to question yourself and go, am I just crazy? All right. Do you have a story for me? Well, I do, but you know this one. Oh, that's fine. I can't... I probably forgot it. My story is all personal. Okay. But this is the one about... Remember the photo? Oh, that, that's a nice story. It's a nice photo, that. but it is kind of scary in a way it's because a nice I absolutely shit myself. Um, So my... I was in Ireland for one of my grandfather's funerals. While I was there, my other grandfather was very ill in hospital. And before I left, we had a photo together uh, that my my mother took um so this was her father-in-law um so my the on the harvey side and so my granda and i had a photo together and i came back to australia obviously um amy and i got together um and then a while after and this is what i was saying to you before about people who are so stuck together my grandparents were married 65 66 67 years and my granda harvey passed away two months later my granny passed away they just were completely in love and loved each other and they've always been together and so about a, it was about a week after he died mm-hmm. i went out for a, a big ride i used to ride down beach road um, every day and i came back to the apartment and I had the photo of me and him on the bookshelf and there was a bit of blue tack under it and it had sat there for months and months and months and I mean like we would do washing in front of it we mm. had people friends over and everything and I came back from the ride and I was absolutely stuffed and I sat on the settee in my gear and I had my hand sort of over my, over my, the, my face because I was just like <sighs> And then I heard a noise. It was almost like when you flick a playing card like that. That 
that what do you call that that noise like a whew, whew, yeah that sort of noise like someone flicking up at a card and i heard the noise and then i kind of in my peripheral saw something and i looked and the photo of him and i was kind of <laughs> fluttering and landed down on the ground up upright in between my feet and I stopped dead in my tracks, stopped breathing, and then just bawled my eyes out. Mm. But I had goosebumps as well because I was so scared as well. But it was it was really nice, but it was it was really scary as well. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, though. I think it's like he was saying, "I'm o- I'm all good. I'm here." Mm. Am I not, I'm not doing scurry stories. I need more scurry you stories. You do. I have a lot of them. I actually just remembered one as well. Okay, go. Um, so I used to be a vet nurse and there was one shift in particular where I would be the last nurse there. So it was me and another vet. And I remember one night, um, it was literally probably maybe 10 minutes before we were about to close. So it was really quiet. The vet was still in a room with a client um and i was sitting out the front and all of a sudden the phone rang and when i looked at it it said ward and the ward was down the back and i went ah um the vet must need me to go and help with an animal so i got up i went down um into the ward and there was no one there and i was like ah okay went back to the front sat down phone rang ward and i'm like Am I, did I miss them? Like, what is going on? I went back down. No one there. Went back to the front. Phone rang. Ward. And I was like, is that the cat? Like, we had a cat that lived in the vet. And I'm like, is she walking on the phone? I look down. There's no one there. Look, and she's sitting next to me at the front desk. And this phone kept, like, ringing me from the ward. There was no one there. And the vet came out. I'm like, have you been calling me? And they're like, no, I've been in the room the whole time. And that was like, I just could not explain it. I just, mm. it was like one of those moments where my brain couldn't catch up with reality because I'm going, who is calling me? Mm. Who is calling me? It was so weird. But I mean, it couldn't have been a, an animal ghost because they don't know how to use phones. No, they don't have the dexterity. So, <laughs> they don't have thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just so bizarre and i'm just sitting at the front just like it's like you know when you're a kid and you go if i just put the blanket over my head like no one's gonna get me yeah, i was kind of like that where i'm like that. i'm just gonna sit here and pretend like nothing is happening imagine you'd have looked at the cctv and there was someone standing there oh i didn't even think about doing that and i don't think i want to but that's the thing with places like that i mean look you know every piece of land you're on there's, there's people have died it. on it or you know there's been battles and wars and massacres and there's bound to be residual energy somewhere there has uh, to be you know well every, sorry not somewhere everywhere and you know what though also um i just thought of this it could be as well because people um are so to get through well. they're so connected to their animals that maybe um they had gone to visit their animal and the last place I remember seeing them was oh, at the vet. So see, maybe... see, and that's the thing. That's where it's not spooky and it's kind of, it's, it's kind of sad. But, like, because that, that happened. Um, my my dad used to dream all the time after my granny Maguire on, on my mother's side when she passed away. And he kept having dreams that he would pick up the phone and it was her and she'd say, Hey, uh, can you put Mary on? And he's like, why are you phoning? She said, what do you mean? She says, why are you phoning? You're dead. And he was conscious of her yeah. being dead in his dreams. But he had this reoccurring dream all the time. And my auntie went to see a psychic medium. And they said, there's a woman here in a red coat. And my granny wore this red coat all the time. Really short woman with short hair. Yes, that's her. She said she keeps trying to call you. But then she keeps remembering that she's dead. Aww. And... Uh, everyone like that heard this in our family just went holy because they all knew that he was having this dream that she kept mm-hmm. calling the, yeah you know like and it's kind of beautiful but i mean at the same time it is a wee bit 
Even if it was someone you knew, you'd still yeah, be. You'd it's, still be. It's not normal. You'd still be a wee bit scared. You're like, like you, you are dead. You shouldn't be here. But I think, I think for me, hearing stories like that as well, and this kind of goes into a deeper topic. That's the rabbit. No one freak out. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that it? Kind of gives me a comfort about death, because mm. to me, I go, well, it's not the end. There's more to it yeah. than we know. And, you know, we're not going to know until that, that moment comes. But I kind of like knowing that it's not the end of our journey. It's just the beginning of a new one. Yeah. So I'm, if anything, it makes me more intrigued about death rather than fear it because mm. it, it's inevitable. So now I'm more like, well, I wonder, not that I want it, but I'm more like, I wonder what it's going to be like because obviously you know, something happens. Hmm. So I wonder what it is. That'd be a really good episode to talk about. I mean, obviously... Death is a big one. Yeah, like, mm. that. what do you think? Well, it's the it... theme of Sarwan, though, isn't it? It's about mm. honouring the dead and honouring the fact that our two worlds are now closer together than they have mm. ever been. Um, I think you're right. There is a there is an element to comfort in it, and I feel like that as well. Like, you've done a reading for me, and mm. you've had my granny come through. And you picked up on something that my mother didn't even know. And I texted my auntie about it and uh, about the tulips. And that was just... The lilies, Lilies, they? sorry. The lilies yeah. at her funeral. And she said, thank you for the lilies mm. at my funeral. I love them. They're my favorite flower. And I, and I, I was, you know, a couple of glasses of wine in. So I just started crying my eyes out. And, um, but then I phoned my mother and I said to, to my granny have lilies at her funeral and she went I can't remember and I texted my auntie and she said yeah she had lilies they were her favourite and then I said did you have them at her funeral and she went yep she loved them Patty and I went Whew. and it does A plus for me a plus. yeah and Amy's <laughs> secretly going like oh yes and like every time I do a reading and sometimes it's like these really like sombre moments where you're like you know this person would pass and this is what they said and the, the, the person hearing it is like oh my gosh that's so sad and i'm like in the corner like yes i win my competitive side is like, yes i got it yeah <laughs> and that's fair enough but i i think look as much as that is it is you know um sad and is uh, a wee bit scary as well because you're like oh shit um and not don't get me wrong we still like i say I stand by what we said at the start we love this kind of stuff mm-hmm. i like being afraid i think it's a good adrenaline rush. Yeah, like I've done the tallest bungee jump in the world, uh, and I've skydived a few times and bungee jumped a few times. <laughs> like I, I like fear. I think <laughs> that's what it is. But um, but there is that element of comfort when you go. Well, mm. they're there and they're still communicating. There must be something else. There's something. Yeah, yeah, and it just mm-hmm. confirms all the stuff that you know we believe, mm-hmm. which is great. It's great validation. Um, should I share? 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 Should I share some sure. of your stories? Not as in, you, not, not you, Patty. No, not as you, in your the people listening. You, the uh, good I've people. I've got a couple. I've got a couple. Uh, the first one is from B. B A B. B. She says. When I was about six, we stayed in this gorgeous cottage near Mount Tambourine for a while. It was beautiful, but my sister and I kept telling my mum that there was a cranky old lady who would get mad when we played in a certain room. The real estate agent ended up telling her that they actually had a lot of reports of an old woman's spirit in the house, but they didn't, they didn't want to tell her originally and scare her off. She was apparently the old maid of the lady who owned the cottage. My mum, being the boss she is, went into the room and sternly told off the lady and told her <laughs> not to get cranky at us again, and she didn't. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. That. That's great. Um, what have we got next? This one is by Beck. She has a trigger warning here. Near drowning incident. All people involved are alive and well, except Claudia. Um, my family lives in an old soldier's settlement house built roughly in 1949 in rural Victoria. There's always been a presence in and around the house since we moved here in 1998, my sister being two and myself four. 
When I was about six, I remember always seeing a little girl looking through the crack of my bedroom doorway. Me and my sister were at the end of the hallway that leads onto the kitchen. This used to kind of freak me out a little bit, as it would. It would freak me out. I'm freaked out. A lot. This little girl is always seen to be about four years old with long, black, dark brown hair that curls at the end and is always wearing a long, white nightgown, like 40s style. But at the time... As, but as time went on, she didn't really bother us, only seeing glimpses of her here and there out in the corner of your eye. It's like she wanted to play, but she was cautious. She always disappears at the end of the hallway near my old room. A couple of years later, my auntie was at the house and said, how many kids have you got here today? And my mum replied, only my two girls. My auntie said, I thought Beck's friend was here, the one with the long dark hair. Mum said, no, just my two girls. That's our little ghost. <laughs> Skip forward a couple of years to about 2002, and my mum uh, saw a flicker in the hallway. And although there were more kids at our house this day, something made my mum look up and trigger something in her. Unfortunately, moments after this, my brother, 18 months old, had a near drowning experience. We strongly believe it was his spirit warning us or being a guardian angel, possibly. My brother is fun. With a few sightings randomly, the girl went dormant again, then to be seen not long after my younger sister was born in 2004. One night, my mum saw again the white gown in the hall flicker just in the corner of her eye, and then a picture fell the first time this has happened. My mum got up to see what had happened, and saw the photo and then heard my sister in her cot choking. Again, it was the little girl warning us of danger. Now this is where it gets a little spooky. (laughs) Spooky air. When my sister Kaylee was a toddler, she would always be talking and interacting with someone, someone who we know, who no one else could see. Once Kaylee was old enough, we asked while she was playing cups of tea, who are you talking to? She turned around to my mum and said, frankly, my friend Claudia, and continued to play. The playing continued for a few years. Claudia is, was, always attached to my younger sister Kaylee the most, but she's been seen by every member of our family and some visitors. Claudia doesn't seem to be harmful at all, but seems to be around when younger children are at the house. (laughs) I was once asked I once asked a person who was psychic and they believe she was a World War One soldier's daughter that had drowned in the dam that's at the back oh. of our property and that would make sense as why she's dressed in the nineteen forties. My um, arms down, are so down at the bumpy. dam is very eerie and not a great feeling. Whether this is true or not, I'm not sure, but we have cited Claudia being wet it's like she went for a swim closed. We we still see Claudia to this day and the last sightings were only this week. Um, glimpses of dark hair and a white gown in the hallway. Whenever something weird or odd happens now, we just say, hi, Claudia, and continue on our way. I could cry. Oh, what a beautiful little girl. See, they're not spooky. They're sad. No. This should be the sad story episode. I know. I'm still a little bit freaked out, to be honest. I'm pretty freaked (laughs) out by everything that's been spoken about. All right, this one, you will like it. It's uh, set in Ireland. Hello. This is a story by Karen, and she says, "So this was where this was about twelve years ago. I had just moved to a house in Cork City in Ireland. The street had some of the oldest houses in the city, and during the times of the famine, people would come to that street to die. Ugh. It used to be known as Famine Street. They left that part out of the advertisement. Yeah. Not long after moving in." I started having strange experiences, weird smells around the house, what smelled like chemicals that no one else could smell apart from one other housemate who used to also have strange experiences around the house. One morning I woke up and there was a young girl staring at the end of my bed. I wasn't afraid of her. She didn't scare me. She just watched me as I slept and then disappeared in a blink of an eye. Oh, it's always a young girl. Mm. (gasps) <gasps> They're the creepy ones. <laughs> the creepy ones. The next few nights, my boyfriend at the time said I was waking in my sleep, shouting, "Get, keep away, stop touching me. But he always swore he didn't. We decided for him to stay... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
We decided for him to stay at his own house for a while. <laughs> Why is that funny? Why? She kicked him out. I don't know. Okay. Maybe he was freaked out. I don't know. Every morning I would wake up with scratches and marks around my body. So I started wearing gloves to bed. I would wake up with gloves on, but still scratched. Ugh. Ooh. Everywhere I walked, I felt like I was being followed. There was always a feeling that someone was about to brush up against me, but there was never anyone there. I wanted to be on my own. I had no energy. I didn't want to socialize or hang out with anybody. One day I said enough was enough. I was waking up like I hadn't slept. So I went to a holistic shop not too far from my house. I'd always been into crystals and incense, but I went into this shop for the first time. <clears throat> the lady behind the counter would not make eye contact with me. I went up and asked what I could use to cleanse my room and house. She wouldn't look me in the face. She said, try some of this while looking down at the counter. I said, is everything okay? And she said, I'm sorry, you can pay for the sage, but I need to ask you to leave. I asked why, and she said, you have brought someone in with you, and it's affecting all my crystals. She frantically searched in a folder and said, read this every night with conviction until it stops. The other person working in the shop mumbled something in the back, and she said, it's too late for that. This is a stage two manifestation. What? Needless to say, I was shitting myself. <laughs> I had never heard of entities, and I was scared shitless. I read the chant every night. I didn't sleep for a solid month at least. Oh I kept God. the light on in my room every night. Eventually, the feeling of someone being there just left. And not long after I felt it had left, I left the house and never returned. That was at the end of the Famine Street saga. That was the end of the Famine Street saga. It honestly scared me from exploring anything spiritually. And it's taken me 12 years to consider exploring that side of me again. Whoa. The fact that somebody else confirmed it and said, they you, can see you've got it. someone with you. It's I heavy. think that's like next level, isn't it? Like when the scratches start, like that's not like what you see in movies, you know, like mm. when it's almost like demon possession. Yeah. When there's like physical contact or, 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 um, that's when it gets uh, really serious, like hurt assault. Because most of the time they're just, I guess, from what we've seen, ghosts are usually stuck in a loop, and I don't mm. even know. What are they called residual? Residual. Yeah. Residual um, hauntings. Yeah. Where, where they're like they're stuck in a loop, and they don't. It's really, a memory of something. They don't know that you're there. They're just continuously going about whatever they're going about, and then I think there's the one where they can interact like, with like you. Like conscious and ones? Is that what it's called? I'm not sure. Something like that. But then I think when it does become a physical Sigil thing like, like that, that's point. like, that's pretty freaky. Yeah, when they're aware that you're there, like that's in the like, others. Uh, Remember the others? Yes. Oh, that was a good movie. That's a good Great twist. Movie. You haven't seen the others? Get onto it. Get on it now. Um, Is that? I've got one more. Okay, I've I've got the wee quick ones with the kids. Because, of course, kids are it's scary. kids. Kids are terrifying. <laughs> this one's by Candace. Uh, she said, I awoke one night to the sound of someone fiddling with my DVD player. I walk out and I see my four-year-old twin daughter crouched see? down. Always the kids um, crouched down in front of it. It was dark, but I could see her outline. I said, Allie, darling, what are you doing up? She stood up and faced me. I was next to a light switch in the kitchen and flicked it on. There was no one there. Another night I woke up and saw Ellie once again outside our room near the hall table just staring at us. I woke my husband and he saw her too. It wasn't our daughter. There was a little girl here with us and I often hear her laugh. Uh, it's the kids, man. I I said my sister's friend had that where um, they... The, whenever they moved the, so my my sister's friend moved into a new house their daughter kept talking about the girl across the street and because they waved at each other and one day she walked over and said hey um we're obviously new to the area um i was wondering if maybe our daughter and your daughter could have a play date and they went we don't have a daughter oh, stop and she went what 
she said, you have a daughter. There's a girl in your window that's waving to my daughter oh every my day. God. And she's like, we do not have a daughter. That's kind of sad. That's making me emotional. I don't know why. I feel bad for that little girl. Oh, I keep stuffing this up. I know. What's wrong with you? All right, let's go to some creepy kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is this is kind of like, this is an article that I got, but it's really quick, like, kind of tweets of people telling stories mm-hmm. about freaky stuff that kids freaky said. Freaky stuff that is not sad. Welcome to freaky things that kids say. <laughs> Number one. Um... So this guy uh, says, my best friend died suddenly when I was 28. It was a complete shock and I'm still shook. About six years ago, my then three-year-old asked me a lot of questions about what I did before he was born. In the middle of answering questions, he says, yeah, I remember. We were best friends, weren't we? Oh. You got to No, you got to be scared, Amy, or else we're changing the title Ooh. of the episode. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> um... That's beautiful. Okay, so this one's actually relevant to everyone to, to see if this actually does go down. So this guy, uh, this this lady says, my she said that her son is autistic and had significant speech delays. And when he was about three and very limited verbally, one day he stood up in the middle of playing with blocks and said crystal clear with the intonation of a TV docu narrator. The year was 2023. The world was burning. Ooh, that's terrifying. I really hope that's not true, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, this is similar to something that I've heard before, but a friend's child insisted on sleeping with their infant sibling and explained, the baby still talks to God and I'm starting to forget how. That's yeah, like that story yeah, where yeah, yeah. they brought their, their five-year-old kid to visit their new cousin in hospital. And they ran up to the baby and they said, tell me what heaven's like. I'm starting to forget. Mm. That's Uh, what I mean. I'm so intrigued mm. by what is beyond us. This one's one's creepy as. Okay. Is it creepy or am I going to cry? It's creepy. So this woman's saying that she was at a funeral Mm -hmm. and her aunt had passed away. And one of the cousins was sobbing. Um, And her son looked at her. And he was about four. And he looked at her and he said, I don't know why you're crying. You're next. Oh. And she died next. Stop. <laughs> That's oh my God. absolutely crazy. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, he was never invited to a party again. <laughs> yeah, don't bring that kid. He's, he's crazy. This is the thing that I think kids are so open still, aren't they? There's like so many possibilities. So they, their brains must still be filled with information from other lives. And just as we get older, it's all pushed out. Mm. So this is a, the start of a rant. So I won't, I won't get into that. This is a, this is a great one. Okay. okay My daughter was four. She was looking at the window and said, where are all those people walking to? And I turned and I looked out the window and she was pointing to an empty cemetery. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Episode one, The Walking Dead. Um, there, no, there's, there's, that one, there's one more and it's the, the one about... It's kind of cute, though. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of cute. And then and then I'm done. Yep. Because I don't want to take up too much of your time, Amy. Apparently, you need to get going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we live in the same house. Um Okay, you, you tell one and I'll find this one. Oh, I'm done. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, okay, so... You should have been a bit more organized. No, the, but there's so many of them. Okay, my daughter, my daughter. This woman says that her daughter would stand up in her crib and she'd always go, Hi, Seesaw, hi, on a regular basis. And one day she saw an old photo of her recently passed away grandfather as a young man. And she got really excited and she went, Seesaw, Seesaw. Her grandfather's name was Cecil. Oh my God. This is kind of funny though. This this person was putting their kid to bed Mm -hmm. and the three-year-old grabbed their face, looked them dead in the eye and went, Mommy, I would never strangle you. (laughs) (laughs) What was that one with the surgeons? Remember the surgeons saying, like, we want 
<laughs> this is not scary at all. This is completely <laughs> this going off on a rant now. Way off tangent. <laughs> I need to find it, actually. We found this article, and I have never laughed so much in my life, but basically <laughs> it was like the last thing that people heard before they went into under anesthetic. Mm. And there were ones that was like, oh, one of them was um, they were just about to go to sleep and they were like, thank you so much, doctor. And the doctor whispered and goes, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> there was that one where the guy was like, and you'll be asleep in three, two. And he goes, I want to be inside you. <laughs> asleep <laughs> well there was one where the guy was like as he was about to fall asleep, he goes yeah. oh no I forgot and then <laughs> the guy fell asleep <laughs> oh no wasn't there one where I think his leg was being amputated and it was like his left leg and as he was falling asleep the doctor goes so it was the right <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible Doctors would this do guy's that. lost in the abyss for four hours when his legs are amputated, just trying to get back so he can be like, what, what, my that? I just love that. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> no, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> oh my I want to be inside you. It's probably my <laughs> Just to clarify, the guy going under anesthetic said it, not the doctor, because that would be even weirder. Oh, no, that's what it was. It was the patient said, I want you inside me. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh my God. I need to find this article and repost. It needs to come back from oh the, the grave because it was <sighs> literally the funniest thing I've ever read. Anyway, we're not meant anyway, to be funny. It's meant to be Speaking spooky. of graves. <laughs> and then they all died. Died in a horrible <laughs> Horrible accident. Anyway, so that was a bit of fun. That was fun. I do love spooky stories. And Even I though hope... they're all sad. Well, yours were. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone, that I brought him along. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I had things to do tonight. Mm. I didn't know what things to um, I hope that you're all feeling scared. And I hope that we brought a little bit of discomfort to your... Walk, evening, hanging out, cleaning, whatever. Trip I, hope, to I hope you're looking over your shoulder a little bit more the passport than usual. Passport office. Wherever. Yeah. yeah, we hope you we hope you got we hope, t- we hope you hope got terrified. We hope you're scared. We hope you got terrified of this. Of life. Um Um But that was fun. Yeah, it was. Thank you for having me again on the show. I really hope I can do it again sometime. You know what? I have a premonition coming through that you are going to be here very soon to talk about Sawin. And we're going to be sitting here talking about all things Sawin related. Which is exciting because we love Sawin. We are. It's coming up very soon. And so not next week, but the week after, you'll be listening to us talk about Sawin. We're going to talk about it all the time gonna be so good and um, that'll be more formal kind of <laughs> no, really. but it'll be it'll definitely be in in uh, informative Sawin is a real i think it's one of the most interesting sabbats mm. because there's so much stuff with mm. that comes with it it's got a lot of origins that are connected to like halloween and just so many parts of our lives that you wouldn't even you wouldn't even know no but as soon as you hear them you say ah of course things like jack-o'-lanterns um things like trick-or-treating why are we dressing costumes all these things Mm. are all related to Samhain Mm -hmm. they all have really cool stories and it's just a really fun one so I'm excited to dive into that it's a beautiful time of year as well autumn yeah. You know, l- l- the leaves are changing it's color. Cozy. It's cozy. It's snuggly. It's pumpkin soup. And it's tea time. It's tea. It's, it's tea, tea time, time. baby. <laughs> um, but we hope you enjoyed today. Mm-hmm. And we hope that you are a little bit freaked out. Yeah, we hope you're freaked out. And we will, uh, we will see you soon and thank you so much for all your support and your listening and if you and don't forget if you want and to connect for the stories with, and for the stories thank you for everyone that sent them through there were more but we would still be going into the night and 
I'd already fulfilled many people's quota. Yeah, we're done with Patty, aren't we? We just needed a break. But um, if you want to connect with me, you can always find me on all the places. I'm on Instagram at Wiccan Sage. I am on YouTube, Rose Dawn Cottage. I am on Patreon. Definitely, if you're uh, looking for a bit more witchy fun, come and join us over there because it's a cool gang and we uh, we have lots of fun. Lots of fun at Patreon. Kind of rhymed. Kind of? <laughs> that was so unintentional. Did you rehearse that? No, it was natural. Natural ability. I couldn't tell. Anyway, thank you so much, and um, we will see you soon for some f- so and fun. Thank you so much for having thank me, you, Yumi. Patty. It was a pleasure to meet you, and I guess I'll speak to you soon. Yes, you will. Thank you so much, everyone. Adios. Bye.